All right. It's look like a conga line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Dan Galbert. This is uh, Danielle Levine Covina, Mayor, Dan Porterfield from Aspen, and somebody did not uh, get the memo about your name not being Dan. That's okay. All right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we're going to sit down, and this is the final plenary or now go home and do good session, uh, and we're going to talk about the artist role and some other things. Um, but first, uh, I think before we begin, I want to thank everybody uh, who's been so helpful in this, and just take a minute. Uh, it's been a great four days. But frankly, this thing didn't happen out of whole cloth. It wasn't sitting here before we got here. Um, I want to begin by thanking the Aspen Institute. Dan, thank you so much for bringing your problem solving <laughs> to our city, honestly. Well, it, it has been truly our privilege, and we're anticipating experiencing this privilege many times more, thanks to all of you. I want to call out Kitty Boone and Greg Gershoni and their teams. Kitty is here, and uh, Kitty, do you mind standing up for what? And Greg, where are you? Uh, and there, and there is Greg. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank all our sponsors, by the way. I'm so proud of them. Some of them are national organizations, some of them are local, uh, but they all care deeply about this issue. They're responsible and they wanted to do this. And they all made commitments for three years. So that means that this is an annual, not just a one-off. So thanks to all the sponsors. Uh, look at them, buy all their homes or whatever they're selling. Um, <laughs> but thank you. I want to thank the speakers and the attendees. We had amazing speakers here uh, and such a diversity uh, of ideas and people and really something quite amazing. I learned something at every single session. It felt like every moment I went to. Um, and I want to thank our city staff of the city of Miami Beach, uh, especially Michelle Berger, my chief. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, these, uh, they really, uh, it's not easy to, to create something out of whole cloth, to just take an idea and say, okay, we can do this. And they lifted this up in ways that really are amazing uh, with, with, uh, with, with Dan's team. Uh, so thank you all. And thanks, of course, to my, uh, my mayor colleagues, uh, Mayor Levine Cava and Mayor Suarez, who really were so helpful in saying uh, from the very beginning, from the moment, we want this in the city, we want this in the community, we want to show uh, the world and invite the world into our, into our home to, to think big thoughts and solve big problems. Um, and the reason why Emilio Estefan is here with all the Dans, and he's allowed in without that name, <laughs> is the, uh, the movie and video you saw the, uh, a moment ago, he, he wrote and produced himself. So, um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so I'm the moderator of this panel. Um, and I've, this is my first time moderating anything, uh, and so my you're doing good. You're doing good. Don't worry. All right, so far, <laughs> just keep talking. Uh, well, actually, my wife said, "You know, you're you're going to have to listen." And I said, oh, "What does that mean?" <laughs> um, but we're going to have a discussion not only about art uh, and uh, and culture, but about sort of what we do next. Uh, and it's my wife would call it a meta conversation. And when you ever have an argument about how you argue, well, we're going to have a discussion about how we think and what we're going to do, not just with this conference, but with the, obviously the challenge we're talking about. And I want to begin uh, right to you, Emilio Estefan. And if you don't know, I mean, well, you know who Emilio Estefan is. He is my, he is our local superstar icon resident. Okay, uh, and there is, um, I mean. Over 40 Grammy nominations, almost two dozen won. He has done everything uh, that you can do, and he, he, he does it in amazing ways. But I can tell you, I don't know anyone more accomplished than he who is as down to earth as he, and, and his whole family is, by the way, because everybody is talented. And you have, your wife is also in the industry, I think. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> But they're the most down-to-earth people in the world. I can't, I mean, we're blessed to have them as residents of the county and of my city. Really amazing. I want to tell you what, what is funny is fame is so related to you know sometimes I mean sometimes the other day I was I went to a restaurant and coming out and this couple comes and said let take a picture take a picture I say of course I'll take a picture so I got you know the guy was you know let, the girls say I take the picture so the two kids two of the two kids it was getting really close to me like really I say who are you <laughs> and I say Ricky Martin say who's Ricky Martin say then I have a problem <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, it comes to the question I'm going to ask you, you know, and, and it's really, a, I think it's a very uh, legitimate uh, question for all of us, uh, but you have a very special perspective. You know, uh, we all, everybody here is committed to this challenge and solving it, but how do we get the whole world uh, into it? 
And influencers mean something. And they're often not, and I'm sorry, Danielle and I know this, often they're not government officials who are the big influencers of the world. And not even uh, heads of the biggest think tanks in the world are the influencers. It tends to be art and culture and music and fashion and things like that. So as somebody who has produced more than almost anyone in the world and has been as successful in this field as almost anyone and has created, frankly, more icons. I mean, you all have mentored so many people that are household words in addition to your own names. How do we, how do we get folks into this, into the a changing climate as a, as a cultural movement? Well, all this became in a dinner that we got when Dan came looking for, you know, to be a say, Miami is a place. We're multi-ethnic. We have a lot of young people. And one of the things that I feel is technology change. And you know, when you do something and you go on internet now, you go global. When you go global, you reach so many people, and that's the way to go, especially with the young generation. Our, and our time was difficult sometimes to uh, send a message and tell people and a living proof, I mean, what you saw today. We have a problem, and we have to take care of that. People need to rea realize that. I don't think to the years that nobody pays so much attention that like we're paying attention now, thanks to you and all the work you're doing. And I told them, I will write a song, but we still have time. My philosophy in life is, you know, something I was a kid that when I left my, my country, Cuba, I went to rough time and I said, I still have time to make a better life. And that's what I moved to the United States because we live in the best country in the whole world. And I feel that, you know, sending that message to all over the world and see it. Music, you hit so many different demographics, so many different people, and they pay attention to the song, the lyrics. It took me a long time to, to uh, you know, write the lyrics because I want to send a message of power, and we need to do something about it, and I think the best way with technology. This is fantastic, but that's not what we're doing. Look how many people we have here, but when you go online now, you'll be able to reach. I did a concert for the doctors and, and nurses, I was telling you, from Times Square, and we hit over one billion people global. And I hope this message that we're doing here today, all the work, Michelle and you, and the city of Miami Beach, and everybody, I mean, the, the mayor, especially Dan, Everything you're doing, people need to know that we're all working because we care. Listen, we don't live forever, but we have responsibility, responsibility to leave that for our kids and for our grandsons, absolutely. So it's a, it was an honor to be here. So let me follow up, because I was at a, um, just this weekend I was at a uh, deli, and I was with my daughter, and I, we were, she's in her early 20s, and I was suggesting, like always, that she order something that she didn't want to order on the menu if she wanted something else because um, I don't know anything and I'm annoying. Um, and then she noticed in the restaurant some guy and she said, oh my God, that's so-and-so. He has over 10 million Instagram accounts. He's famous. And then she started to walk by him to see what he was ordering. <laughs> and it occurred to me, how, how do we get this generation in the way that they speak and the way that they're influenced by? How do we get those folks? Is there a... Is there almost, uh, it, it, for some folks, stepping out on an issue has got to have a downside because you might offend somebody, right? I mean, uh, you know, they don't like, uh, famous people don't like to endorse political candidates, sorry to say, um, that happens now and again. But, but how do you get them on an issue like that? It's true, by the way. How do you get them on, an, how do we get more of, the, of this group so that my daughter is not listening, doesn't have to listen to me, she can listen to, uh, you know, Kim Kardashian uh, or whomever? Well, listen, I think it's a responsibility. I mean, that, that's, that's the power of technology that you show the world. And I hope they use it for the good, for the good, because realistic, that, that mean, it's been tough. COVID has been tough. We learn, doesn't matter who you come from. It can do a lot of damage for families and everything. And, and realize that, you know, the kids now want things now. They don't want to do it right away. One of the things that I, I love is that, you know, we went to such a hard time, me and Gloria, because we didn't have a radio station, we didn't have a TV. Nobody believed in our sound. They told, change the Miami sound machine, that's local, change your last name. But, you know, I think in the long run, if I feel proud about something, we're going to leave a legacy of respect, a, a, a legacy of, of keeping who you are. And everything that we do, I mean, believe it or not, I mean, of course, you know, once in a while I take my tequila, but I don't drive if I want to have a tequila because, you know, something is responsibility. I always say, something happened to me and Gloria. A lot of people is going to be there. It's going to be a downside about the, the, saying why they did that, you know, something. A lot of people helping a lot of the new generation, which is great. A lot of people is not helping a lot of the generation. Even when you, I do lyrics in a lot of songs that I wrote, 
I mean, like coming out of the dark, it's something that, you know, brings hope to people. It's a responsibility. So I hope they use these things to, you know, to inspire people, to get moving, especially about global warming, things that is important about life. That, you know, it's not about what clothes you wear or what car you're using. It's a lot of other things that is more important that, you know, about life and the future of the, of the, of the world. So I can't help but jump in on this point. I think we had in this summit the equivalent of Lil Nas X and Billie Eilish and Olivia Rodrigo, because uh, we had Laura who was speaking up here a few minutes ago, and we had Vic who was speaking last night, uh, and we had Daniela Fernandez who gave her big presentation about all the different uh, startups that she's helping to catalyze, uh, and we had that incredible Gianna, who's a high school student going to Pomona next year as a first year student. Amazing, amazing that, you know, that we've got the talent. We've, we've got it in our midst, in the young people of this country and this world. And one of the things that inspires me about what you do is that you see the young, you hear the young, and you create with the young. And that's what this movement has to be about. Absolutely. You know, I'd like to say this has to do with listening. <laughs> which, uh, so you're listening intently to where people are. You're connecting to their, their hearts, uh, to their spirits. And that, of course, we know that, that art is a, is a major way to connect and move people. Uh, to understand and to act. And uh, I'm so proud that as mayor of Miami-Dade County, we have actually an artist in residence, and he's actually sitting right there, Xavier Cortada. Yeah. And you all know that he's an environmentalist uh, and then an artist. How's that? And we also have a poet laureate, Richard Blanco, who was at Obama's inauguration. He is our poet laureate. So we understand that we have to get under the skin and into the hearts. And I'll give you an, an example of where we can take that and turn it into real power uh, on a massive scale. Uh, Adrian Arsh, through the Arsh Rock uh, Foundation, working on heat, and we have the first world's ever chief heat officer, Jane Gilbert, uh, they are now in partnership with the five major gaming companies in the world. And they have started to incorporate messages around climate change into the gaming platform so that these things are normalized and they're part of what people are doing anyway and now they come to understand uh, and through your music for sure. That's fantastic. So uh, let me ask you, Dan, um, we're gonna do this next year. Um, you know it. <laughs> well, by the way, and I apologize for the weather um, this week. Uh, <laughs> I ran on a better weather platform, and I promised 76 degrees and sunny, and apparently it's been 77 degrees and sunny, so I apologize for that. You, you kept every promise from a year back. Thank you so much. Actually, that's a countywide issue. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You went right there immediately, didn't you? <laughs> All right. Um, so let's talk about next year, uh, and, and, and not just talk about it in terms of this uh, this meeting, but how this meeting reflects out to the world. How would you like to, what would you like to see added in, in this uh, sort of, on the cultural movement uh, sort of corridor of things to, so that next year when people come here, what, are, what would you like to see, what could we add? This was the first year, but that also goes to the broader, of how do we get people realizing, as Mia says, that it's, it's part of their DNA? Well, I think one thing is we want to listen to what everyone here has to say, because you've been a part of this. And you know, the, in, in an Aspen event, the audience is every bit as important as the people on stage. It's about what we can make together. So we'll have a whole system to, for your suggestions. And that's step one, I think, is to listen. Um, I like the idea that this will continue to get larger organically, i.e. authentic to this place, this culture, this region, all the partners that live here, so that when we leave, people in Miami don't say, well, I'm glad, I'm glad they're gone. <laughs> Um, right. So that's, that's number one. Um, uh, and I think number two is, can we create maybe even more of a kind of expo quality where the solutions expo, where we're seeing who's doing what that's making a difference. You know, more voices, more startups, more culture, more food, more focus on design. Everybody in so many different ways here is doing things. So let's keep that up and then amplify what's being done in order to create that spirit of entrepreneurship, community, uh, and progress. Uh, in this space. I also love that we're working with all of the, or so many of the cultural organizations, all of the universities, the, all, you know, all local government. 
uh, many businesses, you know, these weren't just sponsors, these were partners that gave us the resources to be able to do this. So I think that too is how do we get more people in more conversations. The spirit of this seemed awesome to me. Um, I learned so much, but more than what I learned, I think I enjoyed watching all of you interacting with each other and having conversations you wouldn't have had if you weren't here. And so that, I think, has to be front and center. This is about dialogue, inclusion, solutions, civility, bipartisanship, nonpartisanship, multipartisanship, young, old, you know, middle, in between, all of us together. And that spirit, you, know, you don't want to scale something and lose the spirit. You want to scale the spirit. And maybe what you're talking about, Emilio, is some way that we can then have this, the in-person, grow a bit and then have the amplification of it through digital media and the Knight Foundation has been incredibly supportive of this and through your work then amplify it so that people that aren't able to come in person can experience the progress that we're all trying to make but also the spirit we're trying to create together. Yeah, we're blessed that we have a lot of young people, performers that really care. Yeah. And you know something, that's a blessing because when you reach that, that demographic, it's fantastic. I feel that we have to do a concert. We have a beautiful beach, a concert that we can go live to the world and all these people right. can see Miami. Yeah. And, and get some people to send messages about, you know, some videos. At least the videos are very powerful. Yeah, yeah. It's like when I tell people, when you say I love you, yeah, you can say I love you to anybody, but that means you have to prove that you love the person. Yeah. I think sending all these messages global, I mean, this go to, a, a, you know, now we have the technology, even some of the concerts that we do and things like that, we can go in 12 different languages. When people are talking, we just switch to things and we go and hit different demographics and people understand what's going on. Yeah. The knowledge is advancing in a way that, you know, things are going to be changing in the, in the next two years. Incredible. I recommend we have, a, listen, I'm proud to live in Miami, Miami Beach, because, you know, we have a beautiful city. And people, we, are, we live in a hot city. And, and you guys are doing a great job, both of you guys. Hot as in, you know, not that, No, we're hot. We're, yeah. hot. <laughs> we're sexy. By, by the way, I, I need to, because you mentioned amplifying it out. The Knight Foundation are really, you know, uh, gave us an, an enormous amount of resources. That's code for money. Um, to really make sure we can amplify it out. And, and their, their commitment was really disciplining us to say, look, we want to make this digitized. We don't want it to be a closed, insular thing. We want it out to the world. So I want to thank Knight. I want to thank Related also and, 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 and George Perez and his foundation. Uh, they gave a, a good amount to say, uh, we really think building is so important. Let's do it the right way. And of course, Lenard uh, did the same thing. I thought it was very powerful to see the two of you um, and, uh, and the mayor of Miami together, two Democrats and a Republican, not just that you were talking to each other, you obviously have a great deal of affection for each other and work together every day. So seeing Mayor Suarez with you two set a tone. Similarly, when we had John Durr here at the beginning, he came with a plan. And you know, we can debate elements of the plan, but I think that hope by itself is not a strategy for solving this problem. And so the way, having that in it too, business leaders and people that are really trying to mobilize at the sort of superstructural level, the change that's needed, um, I learned a lot from that. I think that we, we heard from the Florida, you know, leader of Florida Power. Um, I didn't know him before and I hadn't thought about power and how critical it is to somehow provide power and not just say, well, you know, I guess we'll have to have a power free world. Uh, so the way he's thinking about innovation and technology changes so that he can then make a consumer movement to call for green energy, that's like, that's really fascinating stuff. And it takes a, just an extra click, if you will, to listen a little longer to be open a little more to get outside of our own perspectives. Um, and that can come the other way too. I hope that you know, Eric Schmidt and John Doerr, the, the, those guys learn from hearing our, the youth in, the Native American, in, the, in our Center for Native American Youth at the Aspen Institute who are bringing indigenous solutions to the climate crisis. More of that, this is what we could really stand for in this space, that we bring people together in a spirit of inclusion, civility, problem solving, respect and love. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, that's an applause line, definitely. And that we can only do this together. Exactly. There's only one planet, there's only one atmosphere, there's only one body of water, really, one water, and uh, so we have to work together. And for, for me, as, as mayor of a, a major county that's at the, the forefront and the front lines of dealing with climate where we've produced first ever uh, climate resilience strategy, sea level rise strategy, and so on, we know that that plan is only as good as everybody else's participation. So uh, we can't achieve those goals without 
everybody coming to the table. And this, I think, has really created that, that movement and that conversation to make you know, it so. To me, what is amazing, we, we see so many people trying to go out of space. We have a problem here. I we to realize that. I mean, forget about it. We have to fix what we have here. Fix you know, what, what we have. Uh, you know, the, the, we've said the word movement many times in this last 20 minutes. And I guess the question for all of you is, uh, we can say we need it, but how do we get, how do we create that movement? Because I don't, I, I, I you know, I know, I, I look out here and I see a lot of the folks that care. I see Louis Aguirre, they're one of the great re local reporters who cares about this issue all the time. But he's, not a whole lot of other guys like him. Al Roker came down for exactly that purpose. So the question is, how do we make this so that it's not a, a, a few people talking about it or yelling about it? Because hope is not a plan. In either is sanctimony. Right. All right? Uh, so we have to figure that out. And how do we make this a movement? And what can we do here to make that a movement? Although I like the idea of a concert. <laughs> well, the concert, the good thing about the concert, you sang a message. You send a great, you specify things that is happening, but you can raise a lot of money for people in need because the global people will send money to you guys and you guys can spend that to help all this new generation. And definitely to, I mean, the way to go, I feel, because music connects with young people. people. Young people need to understand that we have a major problem. And, you know, we still have time, like I wrote on the song, because, uh, you know, uh, your time is very valuable, and you know something, I know how much work entails, even you and Michelle, that, that how many telephone calls and doing things. I mean, sometimes it's when you see a concert, it's uh, only two hours, but it takes a whole year to plan a concert. And you see people dancing, I say, but you know something, we want to see people dancing, but we want to see a smile and a kid thinking, we have a brightest future. And the way to go is using a lot of technologies, seeing things that is really happening so people understand how difficult this could be. I think you're so right, and, and developing our muscles for collective work, for collective impact, is, is just critical. That really is what Greg Grishani from, from our Energy and Environment Program, that's what he does with his team. They, all, they only work in collectives. Um, Greg and his colleague Ingrid recently got, like a week ago, a $5 million grant from Sergey Brin's foundation to work on creating carbon-free ports. And they're already doing carbon-free shipping. How important is that? But you can't do that just on stage, you know, like just talking. You need people like Greg and Ingrid. They're bringing together the coalition of like and unlike partners. Well, we did celebrate as the soft launch of Aspen Ideas Climate uh, at the port, our uh, five major um, uh, cruising companies that had all agreed to go shore power, and that's going to happen in 2023. Uh, this was a major accomplishment, and so... You know, how, how did it happen, uh, right? How, how do these changes happen? Well, I learned about it a few years ago as a county commissioner. At the time, I raised it to the port director who said, oh, no, no, there's no appetite for that. And I said, mm, we'll see about that. So <laughs> obviously, as mayor, I have a different opportunity. And, uh, and I, you know, I want to do a shout out to the media because absolutely the power of the press to call attention to these things the Miami Herald is now going to have three cl climate-related journalists. Yeah. That is very, very powerful. And then I, I firmly believe it's when the people lead, the leaders follow, and we have great organizations like Clio organizing young people especially. Uh, and, you know, I got interviewed on a podcast, and whoo, these... <laughs> These people knew their stuff, and they really put me through the paces. And it is that level of knowledge, and, and of course, it's their future, right? And accountability to us, and then amplified through the media. And then, um, what do I say, friendly competition. So, you know, these cruise companies, they're all rushing to be the first to plug in. So <laughs> that is really, really powerful. You know, and, and we see that, by the way. In my city, we recently went out for a... Um uh, I don't know if David Dobler's here, but he gave everybody such a hard time about us not being plastic uh, free in some of our contracts that we, we spent months changing the contract because simply a single voice Oh, said, and because you did it, we're doing it in the county too. Right, right. So, yeah. all right, so listen, we got less than a minute. Final words, Emilio, you are our superstar. Uh, I'm just a producer, what are you talking about? <laughs> Listen, I want to I wanted do something that's not in, in, this, in the, whatever you guys are doing here, the script. If there, anybody has any question, one question that, that you want to ask to uh, any of us. Can you write a song we can all sing along to? 
Great, I will. I promise. I told him I will write a song and I wrote the song. <laughs> but the only thing I can say, thank you so much. I know we are busy, everybody's so busy and everything. This is important. It's important because when I see my grandkids, sometimes when I go out with them, I collect a lot of bottles and things on the floor, and I think that's a responsibility. You need to teach them how important it is to get plastic is a problem. Things are a problem. We have so many problems in the world, but we need to make the move to make a better world. That's the only way we have the long haul. We live in a country, also as immigrants, that I can tell you we live in the best country in the whole world because we have the, the we reach the American dream. And we're blessed. I can always say, God bless America and God bless you guys for everything you guys do to make a better world. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Yeah.